I think we're live here. Let me just see. Let me just set this up. Okay, there we go. So we're live on, I'm trying, I'm trying out this new, uh, getting my camera fixed up for YouTube live. I'm not sure if you're seeing me there. And if you are, you can just give me a thumbs up or a comment here. If you're seeing my, uh, uh, that I'm live, just waiting for some people to pop on. But uh, I thought I'd give some of my reaction to the um, appointment of uh, appointment of the new um, Pope Francis appoints a new Archbishop Victor Manuel Fernandez to the head of the Vatican Office of the Doctrine. So this is quite a significant appointment for Pope Francis to make to bring somebody from Argentina uh, to the Vatican and to appoint him to really one of the key the key one of the key positions in the Vatican. Um, he succeeds um, Cardinal Ladaria, uh, Cardinal Muller, um, Pope, Pope Benedict at one stage held this office. So he succeeds this off. Uh, he becomes, um, you know, kind of central to in the church at this moment in time as we head towards this synod on synodality. And I've just saw all of the commentary across the web, uh, Diane Montagna and various people um, and uh, commenting on this. And, and Timothy Gordon, he, he was very strong in it. And I wouldn't use the word that he used on his feed to describe him, but um, he, he was very strong in his words against this man. And I suppose, what are my thoughts on what is going on with this promotion or this position? And... Um, I haven't read his books. I don't know the man and I haven't read his books or, you know, they, everybody's focusing on this one book, um, Como, Como Sanar La Boca, how to, how to Heal the Mouth. And it's a, a book of poetry on kissing, which, okay, it's going to raise eyebrows. And again, I don't know the background. I don't know the man. I don't know this book. So very little I can comment on the man until I read up on it. You might be asking why I'm even commenting on it in the first place. I suppose people are, are kind of looking at what has gone on in Rome. But my suggestion to Catholics um, looking at this situation, if you have any concerns on it, we should be looking at ourselves and what we can do to grow the church and to be saints ourselves. Because at the end of the day, the Holy Spirit isn't going to abandon his church. Uh, our Lord isn't going to abandon his church. There will be confusion. There could be a council. There could be division and schism. And God knows what could come to the church. But when you go to, be, as a layman, when I go before our Lord, because I'm not a bishop, so I can't make any authoritative decisions about faith and so forth. I can just affirm what the faith that I've been taught and I can live the faith that I know to be true. That is you know, deposit of the faith and uh, lead people to that. And I suppose the the, the call now for, for Catholics, lay Catholics at this moment in time, if you're wondering about who this person is and the confusion, I suppose wait a while to see how things play out because, you know, either this man will, you know, he will, he will carry the spirit with him, the spirit of God uh, in his work, or he'll be abandoned. And, you know, we don't know. I, I simply don't know. And uh, I don't think it's up to us as bloggers to start throwing darts at a man one day in office until we know more about him, his history and so forth. Um, but what I can tell you, you know, is it's up to us to be saints. It's up to us to know the faith. It's up to us to live the faith and to bring others to um, know this beautiful faith. You know, I, I, I've been blessed this week to see some beautiful examples of people with humble faith, how they really do transform those around them. And the more I experience this, the more I say, oh, look, this is what we need to be doing in the church. Because it's very easy to blog about somebody. And it's another thing to pray with somebody. And we need a mission of prayer in Ireland to get out and to pray with other people, to bring them to the, to the truth, to give them a word of wisdom, to show them that they're, that, 
their um, their beloved children of God and that God wants to get into their lives. Um, Pope Francis and this new um, and uh, the, the new Archbishop. Uh, well, let me get his name exactly. Archbishop Victor Manuel Fernandez, you know, Argentinians. And if you in the Latin American Spanish environment, you know, the, there is a different culture. You know, I've lived in Mexico and there is different cultural realities and how people confront different realities in life. And, um, you know, we can have the the doctrine of our faith, but it's a, it's a how do we apply the teaching of the church to the reality of people's lives? And, uh, you know, when when people come to encounter the faith, you know, we, we should we should first bring them to encounter you know, the beautiful reality of encountering Christ, a person. And the only way I, I can see how we'll ever evangelize in the church is bringing the power of the Holy Spirit along with the teaching of the church. You know, you can't divorce one from the other. You have to move hearts and minds when you evangelize. You can't just intellectualize the faith. You know, sometimes in Rome, the faith can be very, very intellectual, very dogmatic in the sense that it can be very clerical um, and, does, and often doesn't uh, descend to the practicalities of our life, you know, not just, you know, to the day to day realities of our life. If you if you think of, a, you know, somebody coming to the faith and they've had a failed marriage through no fault of their own, maybe maybe you have a woman whose husband has abandoned her and. Uh, a man whose wife is a banner or something like this and they're in a second relationship and they've never been catechized and they, they, they're they coming to encounter the faith. You know, if we rush in there with, with the teaching of the church without applying it to the reality of their lives today, you know, we might lose them. You know, if you, if you, if somebody coming to the church looking for Christ and we condemn them, because this sometimes happens, it has happened in the past. If we think in Ireland, and I still remember it, you know, uh, if a woman had a child outside of marriage, I mean, she was labeled for the rest of her life. She was, you know, oftentimes she wouldn't. If she had the child, you know, she was labeled. And uh, the, there nearly wasn't, even, there wasn't a level of forgiveness in, in the church, <laughs> in a real sense, for, for that woman. Uh, you know, she was labeled and, 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 and that's very, very sad when we don't know the circumstances of, you know, how that happened. And a lot of people carry this trauma with them all their lives. They, they, there is trauma in the church. There's trauma in how we preach, live and teach the faith. And, and that's really, really sad. And what we should be bringing into people's lives is healing. We should be leading them to prayer, to encounter Christ. You know, it's very, very important. And I'm, again, I'm here. I'm not saying we should change church teaching or anything like this, but we should be able to be able to give that church teaching with the power of the Holy Spirit. You can't, you can't, one can't be divorced from the other. And you have to be, you have to be able to help people in their concrete lives. And, I, and I've witnessed this firsthand. I've witnessed this firsthand in people's lives where, you know, very difficult situations that they're in. And then you see the power of the Holy Spirit come into their life like a, a knife able to surgically arrive to the place that person needs healing. And, and, and you humanly can't do this. This is all heaven. And then you're able to open up into that person's life. Look, you're healed. Now you can grow spiritually, you can flower, you can, you can increase, you can understand the, the beauty of our faith. You know, and sometimes we can go, go forth with the intellectual side of our faith and, and forget the, the, the spiritual side. And so this is my call to Irish Catholics. You know, when, when us lay Catholics, because I'm, I'm really talking here to lay Catholics, I don't really, you know, I'm, I'm, Priests and bishops, they have their mission and they, they should be defending the faith and authoritatively teaching the faith. Um, but us lay Catholics, we are called to be saints. That's our call, to know, live, love the faith and to bring people to Christ, to take them by the hand and lead them to Christ. 
and I do encourage people to go out and pray with other people. You know, when I, when I say prayer, prayer just is not just really reciting um, a set, you know, a rosary. That's a form of prayer. Beautiful, beautiful way to start. But pr sometimes prayer is just talking out with them their issues and bringing the Holy Spirit and Christ teaching and the gospel into their lives. And so they can be freed and they can know that they're loved and that can, you can give them encouragement and you can start them off on, you know, this spiritual exercise of growing in faith because we don't all arrive to holiness on at the same time, at the same speed in the same, you know, way. And if people are looking for Christ, bring them to him, bring them to him, you know, help them to resolve the problems in their life. Um, you know, give them direction, give them help, support them. Um, and so, you know, that's why I'm not going to comment really on this archbishop who is the new head of the doctrine of the faith, because I'd need a few more weeks to actually read some of his books. So I can actually know who he is, who's what's his history. Um, you know, to, to actually form an opinion on the guy. Because it's very easy to, to apply a bumper sticker, sticker reaction to somebody just announced. Um, you know, because I've seen, I've been through the church and I've seen, you know, the, the reality of, of different papacies. And people will, you know, if, pe if people think everything was rosy in the garden in the 1950s or 60s or 70s or 80s or 90s, you're putting your head in the sand because there are there were always issues in the church and um in now and now it's time to go deeper into the call to holiness and it's a time to be radically authentic in this mission to preach the gospel and and that, i suppose this is the encouragement i want to give um uh to the to the to those around us. Uh, question here: What is your opinion on the Book of Truth based in Ireland? Um, follow the money. Always follow the money. So that's my opinion on the Book of Truth based in Ireland. Follow the money. Always follow the money. Uh, if somebody is really giving the message, uh, uh, you know, the gospel to you. You know, they, they'll give it to you freely without strings attached, without emotional strings, without financial strings, without, uh, you know, causing division in the church. Always follow the money. The older I get, the more I see this. Whenever I see money attached to something, which is not wrong, like, I, like don't get me wrong, uh, I, I do encourage people to donate, you know, to do, donate to the church causes and to keep and the structures and the institutions of our church alive. But the book of the book of truth, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just do your own investigations on, 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 on the lady that wrote that book and the finance, the finances around that book. And remember that a, a broken clock can be right twice a day. So, you know, some, just because some things in that book turned out to be true, um, you know, it doesn't mean that they're that they're that they're all that they're always um, right. So just follow the money. Um, the terrible uh, sex scandals were taking place in the church in the fifties, sixties, seventies, nineties, and have damaged the church of today as things are not as rosy in the garden. Look, there has been scandals in the church since day one. Um, you know, and Christ called Judas to be one of his apostles, and this is the reality of original sin. We'll always be confronted with this. And this is really important in the spiritual life. You, should, you, you need to go into that interior castle and encounter Christ and make your and for, and build your faith on Christ, not on the people that profess the faith. It's always good when you have strong Catholics in the church, you know, good, good leadership and good Catholics. And it's it's good, it's good to to be around people with faith, but just don't be taken in. Uh, when when you see people falling, when you see scandal in the church, because we are human, we fall, we fail, um, and you know th that's the sad reality of us, and that's why we need to 
we need a stronger program of sanctity in the church. We need to teach people to pray better. We need to we need to be opening up. Uh, especially, we need to be reading and listening to the saints of uh, and how they lived and practiced the faith. And we need we need a serious program of discipleship on how to be saints. And uh, when I heard this word in eight, and when I was eighteen, you know, that we're all called to be saints, you know, not not canonized saints, but like, you know, we're all called to heaven. Let's replace saint being a saint as being, we're all called to heaven. And in order to get into heaven, we, we we have to have passed the same set of exams. We have to have purified ourselves. You know, you can't go into heaven resenting or hating or, or um, you know, we, we have to go to where we know we are loved. And it's just, and as we, we need a stronger program in, in trying to help um, people in the church. And this is why I'm so, because I've witnessed this firsthand, you know, I've, I've literally witnessed miracles. And this is, when you see these miracles, you say, oh my God, how powerful the Holy Spirit is working. When you're given, when you're talking to somebody and you're getting a vision of, of something that that person is going to do or has to do, and you're there wondering, oh, how will that play out? And then when you see it in action, when you see it in action, you say, wow, wow, the, the, like the Holy Spirit is really working very powerfully. And um, and this is and, and the fruits of this is the person can love the faith more. They can get closure on their problems. They can develop. They can go on to help other people. This is the, this is what we need to be doing in the church. You know, Rome will all the stuff in Rome will keep happening and we don't know where this is going to go. Um, but, uh, you know, Garbandal and Our Lady did prophesize, you know, different things. But we should never be pessimistic. This is the challenge for us to be saints. Christ has not abandoned his church. He's not abandoned us. The Spirit hasn't left the church. Spirit is working very powerfully in trying to grow and renew the church and to, and to um, raise up people that will lead and help others. And that's why I want to give the encouragement. Um, it's, not, it's not that I'm giving reasonable, no-nonsense approach. I'm just telling you, uh, sometimes we can distract ourselves as Catholics in social media and not focus on the fact that, hold on a second, my first task is I need to be a saint. I need to know sacred scripture. I need to know what I can do for Christ in my life and how I can help those around me. You know, it's, it's about doing the things, it's about helping those that we encounter around us and, 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 and knowing where we can bring them for help and, you know, knowing what they can do, we can do for them. Yeah. No, I mean, yes, the church will always survive, but perhaps with fewer people as Pope Benedict. I mean, I've, I've heard that. I, I don't buy into that. <laughs> I think when people see the raw, real, authentic saints that are going to come, because if you think about it, what is coming for the church are saints of the likes of Padre Pio. You know, I've met people like Padre Pio. I know them, you know, and this is what's coming for the church. Saints that are going to, you know, question people, challenge people. They're going to show them that heaven is real, that Christ is real, the sacraments are real, prayer is real, that there is some, because the world is so desperate for something. You know, this is why the likes you have these speakers like um, Peterson and, and others, you know, they get a massive following because people are lost. People are lost. And, uh, you know, you can have as much money as you like, as much pleasure, as much anything you like, but you're, you're always going to, you're always going to ask you, well, this will always fail me. You know, there's that great poem by by uh, Thompson, um, and he has that famous line: "All things betrayest thee, whom betrayest me." You know, uh, you can have you can have as much wealth and everything, but at some stage you're going to be on your deathbed, and all of that will be taken away from you. And what will be left? You know, and this is the reality. We need to teach and lead people to the path of. Of, of holiness, how to practice their faith, how to pray, how to have an interior life, and how to, you know, use these gifts that, that, that heaven is pouring out. Because heaven wants to evangelize. 
Heaven wants to get into our, our lives to help those around us and to build up the church. So it's all being poured out. It's all being poured out on us. It's there. Do we want to accept it? And it's about emptying ourselves and letting Christ Christ fill us, you know. Um, will they allow marry priests soon? The way that the synod of synodality is going, I, yeah, I, I really think it's a foregone conclusion. Will this happen? Do I think it's going to save the, the you know, just change much of the church? Not really. But, um, you know, I, I've, 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 I've worked with some married deacons um, and, you know, they're, they're, they've always been, you know, very good friends of mine, and strong men in the faith. So, you know, maybe it's something that the church will look at. And uh, I know married priests in the East, especially. So, you know, in the East, you have this very, very strong, um monastic life you know where the monks are not married so if you go to mandatus it's all celibate monks and you also have some some married priests but it brings its problems and so, and so forth and um you know <laughs> i don't know if it's the panacea that some people think it's going to be so will it will it will it happen if you were if i was betting on this because pope francis has spoken on it yeah i think it's going to happen um and yeah but like I wouldn't get too hung up on it one way or the other, you know, um, and uh, it, it'll be interesting to see. It'll definitely be, it's not going to be anytime soon. And it might be up to bishops conferences in different parts of the world to decide if they want to implement it or not implement it, maybe ordain some de um, permanent deacons who've been deacons for a number of years. Uh, if you want, if you want to ask my personal opinion, I think some, some permanent deacons that I know would make excellent priests. That's just my my thoughts, and I think they would make incredible priests. But that's that's just uh, you know a personal opinion. Um, but um, you know Christ is very jealous. You know he w once you start following Christ, he wants he wants your your whole attention. And I think something like the priesthood requires a lot of a lot a lot of focus. Um, and uh, you know it, it's hard to be interesting to see how that would marry out. But look, it's a, it's not a dogma of faith. It's it's a um, discipline in the Latin Church, and it could change. Um, and let's see. Any other questions you have there? Just put them in the chat. I just put it up, it up here. Did I miss anything here? Because I haven't done live for a while. Uh, Okay, let me see here. So, if you want to just let me know where you're, where you're, where you're watching from in the chat, uh, it, it would be interesting. Um, so I could uh, just identify the audience there, and if you have any any other questions or you want me to talk about anything about the the faith in Ireland, um, it'd be good. But. Uh, yeah, it's an, some interesting. It's a some interesting time here at the moment. Um, so, uh, South Carolina, USA. Okay, so I've been to Tennessee and Georgia and Alabama, but not. Uh, I I've been to Tennessee. I went to Ruby Falls in Tennessee. So, um, um, and some aquarium place. Uh, at the, but uh, it was very nice. Oh, North Queensland. So uh, Australia, it's, it's from both sides of the world. Uh, that's very interesting. Um, so, yeah, just just coming back to uh, the, the point on um, on the new head of Doctrine of the Faith. Uh, and there's a lot of commentary that, see, that seems to be going around uh, <laughs> in the Catholic Twitterverse. I suppose I'm going to call Catholics back, you know, be saints yourselves know the spiritual life um you know because then you will have the peace to understand okay well these things have to pass or this confusion has to be and who knows who knows right now well, right on the barrier reef francis okay queensland good to know tester uh, tester over there from north queensland um anyway yeah keep putting your your comments in i don't do the live chat very often because um but uh it's uh, uh it's interesting yeah 
the, our faith is now practiced at home. Well, you know, it's good to practice your faith at home, to have a life of prayer, uh, go to adoration. You know, I, I really do think it's it's um, it's interesting. I, hi, Kay, listening from County Leash, Ireland. How are you keeping? Great to see you. Yeah, if there's any other Irish listeners, I'd be interested to in know. I'm, I'm, I'm always interested to see uh, what, what's what's it uh, what's it like. Um, yeah, my podcasts. I'm glad people like them, but this is just like a, a podcast diary. I'm I'm kind of a little bit dyslexic, and when it comes to writing, I don't I don't do the diary stuff that as much as I like to. Do you think the sex scandals in the church undermined uh, John Paul's legacy? Well, it under uh, undermined. Pope Pius XII's legacy, and on the mind, uh, John the Twenty Third, and and Paul the Sixth. I suppose we, we live in an age when there's so much commun uh, so much information now going around. You know, in the in the time of Pius the Twelfth, you know, if, so, if something came out, it would have taken two or three days to reach uh, different media, and then when the when it reached the media, there would have been a sanitized version done of it. This is the reality. You know, information is just becomes global at very, uh, you know, at very instantly in 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 this stage. And I, I honestly think that there were issues in the church, you know, before 1950s that were covered up. Um, we know this um, because people had a very poor understanding of of um, of themselves in a, in a certain way. Of and and the, and a lot of the church formation was very scholastic, very. You know, talking about the intellectual formation, Thomas Aquinas, and the emotional formation wasn't done. It simply wasn't done. There wasn't enough focus on the emotional side of your formation. And if you're if you're not formed emotionally correctly, and then you're going into an apostolate, and you haven't dealt with yourself, then you know these things are going to go off the rails at some stage. You know, you have to be you have to be a strong character, and that's why um, you know I think the church has to learn from the issues of the past um yeah and uh, let me see our lady said the faith will never be lost correct uh, so what about needing and receiving uh the holy eucharist well i always i always receive the holy eucharist kneeling and on the tongue because that's the universal norm of our right you know the universal norm is to receive in the tongue so i promote that now the left uh, ryan toberly has left hard he do you think there's any chance he will join the Redemptress. I have no idea. Um, hi, Mary O'Leary from Navin. I, I used to live in Navin, at Lomini in Navin. Um, uh, you have two beautiful perpetual adoration chapels in Navin. Um, beautiful. Uh, I remember going to Mass there when I was young. Um, what responsibility do we lay, lay have to discerning the, the truth? About the mess in the church. Ours, well, look, we can challenge the church. I, and I certainly do challenge the church. If the church teaches something and then we're doing another thing, you can challenge people in charity. Um, our, but our responsibility as laity is to know the faith. Know the faith. Please know the faith. That's all I can, that's the only advice I can give you. Because once you know the faith, they can't take away the faith from you. So know the faith, learn the faith, learn and learn, learn the whole landscape of the spiritual life. And this might take a few years, but it's well worth it. So that's the responsibility that we have. Um, uh, our leader said the faith will never be lost in Portugal. That's true. Um, a good evening, Sharon McNamee from Wexford. And James Andrew Cross from Kildare. Great to see you. Um, you know, it's good to, good to, <laughs> to draw it. Um, we have a very traditional holy church just seven minutes away from here in the mountains. Um, can you do a show on the power of the rosary? It's our most powerful prayer apart from the mass. Yes. Uh, I mean, the rosary has, de has centuries of, um, of tradition on it. And um, I mean... There's been so much said on it, but like I suppose the the, the area that I want to to um, the, the, what, the the one thing I would say about the rosary when you're in your prayer life, it 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 kind of quietens your mind. So many people say, oh, when I'm praying the rosary, I get distracted and I'm thinking of this and I'm thinking of that, and I'm not getting anything out of the rosary. I'm praying the rosary and I'm distracted. Um, distractions are okay. 
and you know our our minds are are racing you know so much that you know the the rosary will train us to pray better so uh, it's it's very very it's a good benefit to to pray better so I, there's so many so many people have spoken about it you know i, I and i'm no and, and i'm no great greater than anyone else but uh you know it, it's it's like an hors d'oeuvre of prayer it's you know when you're starting a meal and and you're getting tasters or something like this this is what the rosary is so i do encourage people to pray it because there's so many saints have prayed it and it, it'll start your prayer life off you know meditate on the mysteries it start you into a, you know a deeper um um uh, yeah and dom uh, father don calloway has a great talk on it yeah i agree um what do you think of the recent whistleblower in the U.S. Army saying that they have crashed UFOs? Yeah, I listened to that interview. He hasn't seen the UFOs, so <laughs> I think this man talking about talking about uh, UFOs. I, I mean, I don't know, and uh, I don't. We used to in in, in university. We um, we did it. We were talking about how would UFOs change the faith. Well, I don't think they would fundamentally change much because. Uh, you know, if it did or come to be, but um, I, I, I've nothing, I, I've nothing much to say in it. Um, hi, uh, Derry Nord Nine, Robert. Any updates on part two of the adoration? Um, yeah, no, I've, we're seeing if we can go back to Derry this year. So we're just looking at the logistics. So the same day in Derry uh, this year. So it'll be the eve of uh, Christ the King in Derry. So we just have to work out the logistics to see if it's possible. So you can pray for that. I know a lot of men got healings in, uh, in Derry last year, and uh, it's done a lot of good for men around Ireland. Um, and many women were commenting on how it's helped the men in their family. And um, so we'll, we'll, have, we'll see if we can do it in Derry this year. There's, I have three activities planned this year. I have Loch Derg in two weeks. So uh, this day, two weeks. Oh, sorry, no, today is Saturday. So... Friday, two weeks is the 13th. Uh, it's uh, sorry, 14th to the 16th of July. We're at Loch Derg, Men of St. Joseph. But if women want to come along, you can. There's, no, there, there's nobody's excluded. Uh, so the 14th to the 16th to come to Loch Derg. Uh, and then the last Saturday of September, there's a men's retreat in uh, Mir House in Killadoon in County um, Mayo. So if you're interested in some of that, and then we're trying to do this, the adoration in Derry on the eve of Christ the King, but I, was, I haven't finalized logistics on that. Uh, yes, there's a, the UFO thing is kicked off. I, I mean, I, I, I don't have, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's amazing how some people get, their life is caught up with the conspiracy. Happy pro-life day, especially to all the rally. Yes, it was. Uh, I would have loved to have gone up to to Dublin, but uh, my wife's away in Poland, finishing off stuff after her mother died two two months ago, and so you know I couldn't abandon the kids. And uh, uh, yeah, it's been an interesting day. Happy Canada Day. Yes, well I'm Canadian, so I forgot about that. <laughs> I, I must crack something open. I'm Canadian Irish. I've two. I've got my my Irish, my Canadian passport and my Irish passport, which is very handy for America. Um. Yes. Uh, so um. Yeah. If there's any questions on on the faith on uh, on the new appointment, what are your thoughts? Um. What are suggestions? Any good books that you guys are reading? You want to suggest? Put them in the chat. I'd love to know. I love when people give recommendations on books. I just reading. I was just back. I was in um, Maritzu and um, Monastery in um, Benedictine Monastery in Belgium, where Dom Columba Marmion died, and there was this young monk. Um. Uh, the, the letters of Dom Pius the Heptine, and I was at his grave, so I got the book. So I do recommend if you if you if you want a, a book, uh, you know it's it's been reprinted by Seneca Press. So Dom Pius the Heptine, and um, Seneca Press is the only press that has published this book. So if that's the only seems to be the only place. So, but if you have any books you want to recommend, let, uh, put them in there. City of God, I've read that. I have that. Um, let me just see here. Yeah. Oh. 
Uh, let me see here. I'll put this one there. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I've read the city of God. Dom Ripper, the the new book Dominion. I'm gonna try. I, ha I haven't heard of that book, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. D yes, Jerry was amazing last year, and let's pray it'll happen again. I uh, and the the thing about the Derry Federation, if it was organized so last minute, if we'd have given people more notice, there would have been more people there. It was just amazing. I love Derry. Uh, I think it's a great place to. It's a, it's a, especially um, Long Tower Church. It's just beautiful. Um, you know, and you, you always got to come back refreshed. Uh, Devotion to the Dying Book. I must check that one out. And uh, yeah, if, and if you know of any good events coming up around Ireland, let me know. I, I'm finding that there's great pockets of Catholics around Ireland. And, uh, um, you know, it, it's so encouraging for the faith. Thanks. I like uh, you like the photos. Yeah, I, I, I've created a mini chapel here. And it helps me pray, and uh, definitely it, it, it's uh, it's beautiful to be able to pray uh, in this my home office that I did during COVID. So that's how this got created. You know, if it wasn't for COVID, I wouldn't have set all of this up. Um, but uh, yeah, and that's interesting. So uh, yeah, just keep the comments coming if you've anything, um, if you've anything else that you want to want to me to discuss or to. Uh, uh, put here to talk about but um yeah today was the pro-life rally um um when when did become holy who said uh sorry i don't know that i don't understand that question whoever wrote that one in uh but um yeah today was the pro-life rally so it was a uh would have been a beautiful day to be up there and i think it's important that we we keep a witness to the pro-life cause i I, I'm, you know, I, I'm, we were up in Dublin during the, the 2018 rallies just before the referendum. It was very, very sad to see, you know, the, the right to life removed from our constitution. But I think we'll we'll have to learn from that. Um, and it's uh, and that's why it's important for Catholics. You can't sit back. We can't sit back and just say, oh, somebody else will do this. You know, we have to step up to the mark and, you know, be saints. Um, and, and it's not easy. Pope John Paul, John Pope John Paul's the book Love and Responsibility. I read that years ago. It's very good. You know, he he was, you know, he's got some great writings. Um, um, when did you become holy? Who said so? I don't know. I don't know if I'm holy. It's it's a work in progress. <laughs> um so I, I don't think i don't think i think it'll take take a lifetime to do it uh, i don't think i'm so secure in my virtue that i could say you know it's it, that yeah it's all done no it's it's a, it's a learning um yeah it is sad we removed it from the constitution it, it really was I, I was gutted that day uh, when it happened i was really gutted i thought you know uh, it's how you know we've really lost we've really lost it if we can destroy the unborn um such a basic right uh, very sad but look this is the reality of our of our of our of the life um 30 days devotion to the holy souls in purgatory through this i got many prayers answered okay is that a book 30 days devotion to the holy souls in purgatory if if, if you do uh, how do you become holier how do you become holier you we well, you become holier by by using the sacraments of the church, you know, confession, Eucharist, and prayer. This is the, the the you know our Lord didn't abandon us, and you know if we go with humility, becoming like a child, read the scriptures, use the sacraments of the church, and 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 use prayer and spiritual direction to become holier. And it's very very simple. You know, the spiritual life is simple. Don't let anyone say it's complicated. And it's free. 100% free. Don't need to pay anything. You don't need to sign up to a course. You don't need to do anything like this. The spiritual life is simple and free. And keep those two principles in mind. Um, so, yeah. What did the Archbishop do? Well, I don't know much yet, but uh, that's why I'm doing this podcast. You can go back to listen to it at the start. Uh, there's been a lot of controversy and talk about him the first day he's appointed. So we'll have to see what exactly did he do. Um, I'm a parishioner. Nice to meet you. 
I, and I'm it's meet you as well, Sean. Um, that sacrifice makes you holier. It can do, yes. Or I mean, if you, practicing the faith is, you know, something very simple. A simple way to become holier, holy, is to do God's will in all things. It is, and if you're reading Luisa Picaretta, she goes into that living in the divine will. Um, you know, that's really important. Um, so who do you think I'll be the next Pope Tagli, uh, Cardinal Tagli, or Cardinal Peter Erdo? Those are the two men I think would be front runners. Um, become more in the image and likeness of Christ, indeed. Um, and you do that by, by, by the, the sacraments. The sacraments are the great, um, have a great power to, to make us into the image and likeness of God. Uh, I mean, to we already have the image and likeness of God, but the sacraments uh, renew uh, our, our, our love for our, our spiritual life. They really do. Like if you, that's why I really encourage people to, 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 you know, to, to know them, to know what separates you from God, to know what's separating from your God in your life, to do that examination of conscience and to renew your commitment to Christ every day and to his church and, and to give this hope to other people. The faith isn't for ourselves. It's not just something selfish. Oh, I'm, my life is all connected when, you know, it's for, it's for the whole world. Let's go out and give it to the whole world. That's why it's really important. Um, so uh, do you think Pope Pius XII will be canonized? Yeah, absolutely I do. He's a very holy man at some stage. Sad he wasn't. He hasn't been canonized already, but, um, you know, I think in due course he, he definitely will. He lived through a very difficult time in the church, uh, especially with World War II. Um, but he was, um, you know, a quite an incredible man. Um, and uh, yes, <laughs> I don't have mainstream media. I don't have a television or a radio in my house, uh, so I don't. I do. I do uh, read on some of the websites, the news websites, to get you know understanding of. But I don't listen to any live mainstream media or uh, you know the odd stuff I I would read online. Uh, Yes, offering up suffering instead of complaining is good. Tagli is dreadful. The Hungarian is good. Well, I suppose I don't. Tagli, is, he, he comes from China. His grandfather's Chinese and he's Filipino. Um, and, you know, he, you know, with China rising, you just never know. Um, you know he might be the man that, that's needed at the right time. So I wouldn't write people off and uh, don't, don't. Let's not forget, you know, Christ hasn't abandoned his church. You know, the whole, Christ isn't going to abandon his church. And it's up to us now to be saints, <laughs> which is easier said than done, I suppose. But it's a challenge that we all have to take up. And, and only the only person that knows this is ourselves. You know, you know, you can look at somebody exteriorly and think, oh, this man's a great saint, but you don't know. I suppose this is something that that all of us have to do um it's uh, a 30 day novena our friends the poor souls in purgatory okay i'm going to look that one up that's good uh taglis are all your clown a modernist and pretty uh, pretty well he wasn't appointed tagli wasn't appointed by archbishop by car by pope francis Ta archbishop tagli was appointed by pope benedict uh so uh, uh, Robert, do you know the previous Bishop of Kalala, Thomas Finnegan, wanted to establish a Catholic university in Balna? Maybe it, it could be achieved one day. Indeed, I do. I remember it very well. The Newman Institute. Do I think it's going to happen one day? I doubt it. I doubt it the way things are here at the moment, but you never know. Someday, uh, you know, Catholic institutions are really struggling in Ireland. And to be honest, um, the way Catholic education is going these days. You know, a lot of lot of Catholic education can be done online. You don't physically need buildings. Uh, but what you need now is good faith communities to teach the pray to, to to disciple people in the faith. So uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what where these things go. Um. And let me see. Our schools are very poorly in the parish. I've worked in them. I know that. I've sent kids to the to uh, three schools 
in in this locality and uh, yeah i know very well the situation in the schools but look uh, i suppose that's where it's up to us to to be catholics uh yeah and catholic eds not catholic yeah so yeah we can complain but i suppose it's very easy to complain but we have to offer solutions and not just complain about the situation because if if we're the constant complainers then we we lose sight you know the the, the call here is to be holy and once once you once we are the, the once we are doing what god wants us to do he'll lead guide and enlighten us and, and where we can go and it doesn't matter who appointed his beliefs uh which are murky yeah that may be true um i cannot thank you enough for your channel thank you for showing jesus and steadfast faith thanks very much it was a pleasure um yeah like as i said you know with the hierarchy and and what's going on in rome <laughs> We don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of years, but it's an incredible time to be Catholic. It's a challenge for you. Do you want easy Catholicism? Do you want easy Catholicism? And it's oftentimes we can get distracted by looking what other people are doing instead of looking at our own life. And this is this is where I see so many people, some, some people in the traditional movement, were, were distracted by others. Some people are, are continuously commenting on a situation instead of getting out and, and and trying to bring the faith to millions of people who don't know anything about Christ, millions of people that are lost. You know, so this is the challenge. We can you can point the finger at what's going wrong, or you can we can point the finger at ourselves and say, look, how can we be saints? Because if you think about it, if you're a saint, if you take up the challenge to be a saint, you can change the church. You know, St. Catherine of Siena, you know, took up the challenge of being a saint, which is emptying ourselves, allowing the God to fill you and to help point you and help you in the right direction to renew the faith and to help the church. So this is the challenge I'm giving you, guys. You know, no matter what goes on in Rome, because, you know, lots of stuff going on. There was lots of stuff. There's always stuff going on. And this is the challenge I'm going to give you because the faith is real. Christ is real. The Holy Spirit is real. That it's not faked. And once you know it's real, once you've done that journey to encounter Christ and you know it's real and you're and you see the beautiful reality of the faith, then you can say, OK, now, Lord, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? Who do you want me to help? I'm here and God will lead, guide and enlighten you to where you, what he needs to do in your life. You know, he'll help you. And if we had more people who are saints, more people would believe in the truths of our church. And this is the, the this is the simple reality, guys. You know, we I, I can't point the finger at somebody else and say, why aren't you a saint? Why aren't you doing this? Sometimes I just have to say, OK, I, I, I'm, I'm just going to do it. And if other people want to do the same thing, let's do it together. But I'm I'm I, 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 I'm honestly at the point pointing fingers at at people who who aren't doing their job it might it might be the it might be satisfying for some people but i don't think it's gonna uh, for me as a layman do much good now if you're a bishop or a priest or a cleric or something like this and you see what's going on in the church maybe it's your responsibility to to stand up and to correct and to help but um i just don't i'm i'm, I'm as a lay person as a layman i'm i'm asking people be saints because a saint is powerful it's probably the most powerful thing that that we can do but it's also it's also dying to ourselves you know because you know it might be just the one person that you help in your life that's all you do and that one person goes on to be you know something great i don't know you know being a saint may be doing great things in the church or or doing one thing in the church that is great you know, and it's definitely, you know, it's it's a journey. It's it, wherever it leads us to. So that's why I'm asking lay, laity in the church or laity around the world, if you want to transform the church, be a saint. Be a saint. Really, be a saint. And uh, yeah, and this, the, the, I know this to be true. I know this to be absolutely true. I know this to be a fact, actually. Um, once you let yourself be led by the spirit 
be led by Christ, once you're nourished by the sacraments and you know that and you know the faith, then you know you you will lead so others to that same truth. You will lead them to the well. So know where the well is. You know, Christ revealed his messianic mission at a well. And yeah, and uh, lead people to that encounter with Christ at that well. And, and they will taste the water and then they, they will know Christ. Uh, have a look at what Taylor Marshall posted about Bergoglio honoring a certain artist who produced what can only be described as abomination. Well, I did a video on that artist in Ukraine and he did another work where he replaced Christ with bombs. So I have a video on my channel on that. I, I, I'm sorry. I, uh, while I don't always agree with Taylor Marshall on that artist, I actually do agree with Taylor Marshall on that particular artist. I hope some people try to defend the work. I just don't. I just thought it was hideous. Um, but um, again, look, uh, it, it th that's nothing to do with Pope Francis, whoever saying that. He didn't choose that artwork, Pope Francis, that was given to him by somebody else. So, you know, I, I would be careful about what people give Pope Francis. And, uh, you know, uh, the, I'm, I'm just stating a fact here. The art wasn't commissioned by the Pope. It was given to him by by Zelensky. So, um, Christ is the head of the church and stay faithful. Um, yeah, so this is this life has gone on for 51 minutes. I think I'll be wrapping it up in uh, in in eight minutes if you have any other questions. Um, but this is the encouragement I want to give you, um, you know, to, to Catholics who are, you know, a bit depressed or something is not happening in your life or, you know, take up the challenge to be a saint. You know, take up the challenge. It's it's like, uh, and see where it'll lead you. You know, ask Christ, what do you want me to do in your life? Who do you want me to help? And it could be the people that are around you. Somebody needs help. Just put yourself forward. Organize a prayer group. Sit down, have the tea and coffee with people. Listen to them without judging them. Uh, okay. Listen to them without judging them and help them you know, and, and bring them to encounter Christ. Um, because our faith isn't a set of rules. It's a relationship with Christ, who's alive. Christ is, is as present in his church today as he was 2,000 years ago after he ascended to heaven. He's, this, he's here. You know, he hasn't abandoned us. Um, so, like, I'm really, really encouraging people to... to um, to take up the challenge to be saints, the laity, and that's what we will transform and renew the church. Um, it's there's no other way, and this is what will happen in Ireland, um, especially over the next couple of years. You know, there's there's, there's beautiful pockets of of faith. You know, I've seen it, I'm privileged to see it in Ireland, and and that's and that's what's needed. You know, those cynicals of prayer around Ireland that are that are really transforming the faith. And that's what I'm encouraging people to do. Pray with other people. Pray with other people. And people will see your faith, your joy, your serenity. They'll see the fruits of the Holy Spirit. When actually, when people see the fruits of the Holy Spirit in your life, they'll want to know, well, what do you have? How did you get that? And you can just say, look, you can have the same thing. You. You have the fruits of baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, confession. Let those fruits develop in your life. And how do you let the fruits of the Holy Spirit develop in your life? By, by getting rid of those that are the opposite to those fruits. If you have resentment in your life, you need to get rid of resentment. Fear, anxiety, shame. If you're ashamed of something, if you're constantly living in shame, you have to get rid of that. You have to say, well, you know, Lord, you go confession get you know get rid of those those blockers spiritual blockers in your life so this holy spirit can get into your life that's why you need to empty yourself and and, and emptying yourself you need to get rid of spiritual blockers uh hail mary for the conversion of simon coveney he needs a lot of prayer yeah um it will catholic immigrants help renew the faith in ireland yes they will there's some very good Catholic groups in Ireland. Um, and obviously my wife's 
Polish so she brings the Polish faith along with her um please keep uh parishes alive in Australian cities they keep yeah absolutely well uh, I suppose you have a you know a lot of you know people that are that would bring the faith from other countries and uh you know we brought the faith to many countries and evangelized many countries so Anyway, I'll be finishing up it on the hour in five minutes. So if you have any any further questions, but I suppose this was the <laughs> my commentary on the Archbishop, the new head of the Doctrine of the Faith, uh, and what to, what's the call to action that I'm giving Catholics: be saints, laity, you know, be saints, know the faith. Um, Christ is not going to abandon the church. You know, he's not going to abandon the, the faithful. And that's why it's really, really, really important, you know, to know the spiritual life and to be saints. And this is the, the great challenge that I'm going to give to people uh, in the church in, in Ireland. Um, and once you know the faith, once you've gone to the well and you've drunk the water and you've encountered Christ and, you know, it it, it, it will transform your life. I'm not going to say it. Many people think that, you know, Advancing the spiritual life is just going to take all the problems in your life away. I don't think that's what it's going to do, but it certainly does give a different dimension to your life. It gives a different dimension. You're, you're able to confront your life in a different way. You're able to see things differently. Um, you know, and that's that's what it's really done for me. And that's why I'm encouraging people, you know, to to follow that path of holiness, to to, to seek out people that will that will help you to be discipled in the faith. You know, it's it's like a you know when Christ called his apostles, it took three years, you know, to form them. He called six men first year, then he called six men the second year, and you know those twelve men they called six each, and then you had the seventy two. Uh, and it's 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 a matter of small groups learning to disciple um, other people and to, to help them to grow the faith, to know the faith. Um, because in order for you to live this faith, you have to encounter the source, which is God. And he has to come into your life and he has to help lead, guide and enlighten you. Uh, like Job, we can face whatever if we have faith. We definitely can. You You, you, you live life differently. Faith with faith, you live, you definitely live life differently, and that's the encouragement I want to give to those following my channel live life differently, you know, love, be, be able to, to encounter Christ. Um, and uh, you, you know, don't get too caught up in the politics side because if you, you know, there, the, 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 the Satan loves division. And he loves to divide and he loves to get in and he loves to, you know, get our minds focused on something, anything that is except the spiritual life, you know. So don't get to don't let your your life be continuously focused on one thing um, you know, um, know the basics of the spiritual life, because once you know the faith, you have good spiritual life and you know, a good interior life. You, you'll you'll see what's going on in the church a little, a, a little bit different. And I speak from experience here. Because it took me a few years after, you know, leaving the legions of Christ and seeing all of the calamity that came after that. You know, it, it you know, God uses this as a training ground to know him better. You know, when, when you see scandal in the church and people fall away because of scandal, they fall away because they didn't have faith. They place too much trust in people instead of Christ. And that's why it's important to have a strong interior life of faith so that you know it's able to withstand the, the storms that come in your life. So, um, you know, that's really important. How can you still live a celibate life in a marriage when you're fin when you have finished having kids? You don't need to. So uh, I don't know what I don't understand that, that question. Uh, celibate married people are not celibate you know you have you live with your wife so i don't understand the question anyway um so uh any if you've any other questions i'll be finishing up here and anyway i just want to want to give this encouragement to everyone this was my take on that announcement from rome anyway i'm going to i'm going to close up now and may god bless you this saturday evening and uh, anyway take care i'm just god bless take care Bye-bye.